Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab where it's our mission to go over every single material UI component and today's component is going to be none other than the typography component. This component is probably going to be the most used component within your application and luckily it's extremely simple to use. So we're going to go through it in depth and if you find value, make sure you hit that subscribe and that notifications bell and leave a comment if you want to help out with the algorithm, it means a lot to the channel. So typography. Essentially, all it is is just text that shows whatever text you want to show to the user. Instead of using a span or a div or, you know, h1, h2 tags like you might in regular HTML, instead, you're going to be using typography if you are using Material UI. And this is a great component because it standardizes all of your text, whether you have a header, a subheader, regular text, you have maybe, you know, um, a caption for an image and stuff like that. All of these things can be achieved and standardized in terms of style, typography, um, font, etc. through the typography component in Material UI. And all of it is also highly customizable. And I'm going to show you how to do that with the theme. Even though we're going to have a whole video separate to theme, I'm just going to talk briefly about the theme as well here. So first thing you need to know is by default, all Material UI components uh, use the Roboto uh, font. And there's a lot of easy ways to uh, get the Roboto font in your project. The easiest way is probably to just uh, link to a CDN that supplies the font. So for example, font.google.apis and they have an example here in the documentation um, which you can just go ahead and copy this straight into the uh, you know header of your HTML of your react page so um, also worth knowing that a lot of browsers come default with Roboto especially Chrome uh, so yeah just make sure that you go ahead and do that especially if you are going to have an application that's used outside of things and platforms like Chrome. So you can also install it with NPM if you wanted to and import it um, into, you know, for example, the top port, uh, point of your application and stuff like that. But in my opinion, I think the CDN uh, link is just a lot easier. So uh, to each their own. Now you can see here, the typography component has a bunch of different variants. So you have an H1 variant, the H2 variant, the H3. And if we go to the API, you can see that the default variant is just body one which is just going to be um and i'll also link this uh this link as well which sort of shows you uh they have like a nice little thing about how, where you should use it and you know it's more ux focused on you know um when you want to have bigger fonts with smaller fonts and stuff like that but they also have sort of like a little uh display where you can see every single type of uh default component here so for example if we go to uh body one you can see the font is roboto the size is 16 pixels the letter spacing is 0 0.5 pixels and the font weight is normal and stuff like that so uh you can see these are all the different variants it comes default with um and as you know material ui is based on the material.io design system so it makes sense um and yeah so with that variant prop you can pretty much go ahead and pass in uh, any one of these. And this is how you use it. So you can see here, um, they, they just have the typography component and then they pass in the variant, you know, H1, H2, H3, and then some text as a children uh, inside of it. And you can see they're also passing in a couple other things. We'll get to these uh, in a second. But essentially that's all there really is to it. And the cool part is for each one of these, for the H1, the H2, and H3, you can actually customize them uh, through the theme. Um, and, you know, that will mostly be in my theming video, but also note that um, there is, like every other Material UI component, they have a base element that they wrap uh, the Material UI component with. And this, usually it's, you, you know, something like a div. Their component will be built in a div, and that's what the root element is. But for typography, it's a bit different. They use something called semantic uh, variant mapping. And what that does is, if you, for example, use the variant H1, um, it will wrap that actually in an H2. And you can see here that this is the default theme for, you know, uh, some of the components and, um, sorry, it will map it to an H1. And you can see that this is the way to uh, override in the actual theme. So when you're creating the theme, you can target the MUI typography, then you can target the default props and the variant mapping. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and change all the defaults, um, you know, semantic mapping. So you can see here that when you make it, it, they overrode it in this example to make it so if you use an H1, it'll wrap the component in an H2, but it will change the styles to be whatever uh, the um, H1 stylings are. So um, 
the re it might sound a bit confusing, but the reason for this is a lot of times for SEO, and one of the reasons is for SEO, for example, on your page, you want to have one H1. Uh, generally speaking, especially if it's like a blog post or something like that, you're that you're aiming to get SEO with. And for those not familiar with SEO, that that's search engine optimization. It's um, what helps your website get on Google. Usually, if you have too many H1 tags on your website, Google will penalize you for that because, in their opinion, there should be one global title for the website. Um, so, for example, if you wanted a lot of uh, typography H1 variants. Um, but there's already an H1 tag and you don't want to duplicate it, but you still want something to look like a title, you could go ahead and pass in component prop and pass in something like an H2. And that will change the actual underlying um, compo uh, underlying uh, HTML tag that is used in the component itself, but it will not change how it looks because it is still applying all the styles from this variant, which contain things like the font face, the font weight, as well as the font size. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, like I said, the typography component is pretty simple. That really is all there is to it. I'm going to be going more in depth in my theming video about how you can change up the theme and stuff like that, um, you know, so that uh, H1 looks different and everything and how you can override what the default themes and stuff like that look like. So I'll make sure I link that in the description of this video. But as for typography, you can go ahead and start using it. You know, um, make sure you wrap all your text in typography and stuff like that. That way, if you ever do need to change uh, your text, you can just change, uh, you know, for example, if you want to change the size of H1 tags, you can go ahead and change that into in the theme and all the text in your application that uses H1 uh, will change. And I found that to be really useful in a lot of situations, especially when refactoring the uh, entire, you know, uh, scaling size of a website, which I've had to do before. And luckily, because we use typography, it was just like a one or two line change, whereas it might have taken, you know, a day or two to go through every single typography and restyle it and stuff like that. So, um, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment or if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys in the next video.